Hey good people, ever wondered about the underdogs of Australian politics? The ones that don't get the headlines but still vie for your vote. With so many options on the ballot, it's easy to overlook them, but they're there, hoping to be discovered. I've broken down every single political party into just two minute summaries. You never know, one of these could be your dream team. Legalised Cannabis Party. It's in the name. If you want to see less people in jail for consuming a product that is less harmful than cigarettes and alcohol, give them a vote. If you think your tax dollars are best spent on policing that prevents people from harming themselves, don't vote for them. There's not much more to it. Reason Party. It's basically the Labour Party but coloured teal and more progressive. They want to legalise euthanasia, spend more money on trains, put Wi-Fi on every bus and spend big on climate change. They also think that every aspect of society should have a 50-50 representation of women, and they really hate religion. I mean, I'm not religious, but these guys seem to hate religion. But just the Christian kind. If you think that biological men should be able to go into the women's bathroom, this is the party for you. They see fit to spend tax dollars on gender transition surgery and making it a criminal act to misgender someone. Again. No economic plan and no mention of taxation, which is how you would pay for this expensive wish list of giveaways. I immediately distrust anybody that tells me I can have it all and it costs nothing. It's BS. Everything comes at a cost and the government can't give you something that hasn't first taken from someone else. Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. These guys are all about farmers and the outdoors. They believe in green conservatism, which is a life based around self-subsistence in the outdoors. Of course, the thing that stands out with these guys is shooters. They advocate for tougher sentencing for illegal firearm usage and relaxing gun laws for law-abiding citizens. They've got a pretty bare-bones policy for the economy, which capitalizes on common tropes such as taxing the big end of town and supporting small business which tells me they either don't understand that big businesses will just pass the increased cost of tax onto the consumer, ultimately hurting the people that they were trying to help, or they are relying on you not knowing that big corporations are both greedy and cunning. I do like that in their freedom, liberty and privacy policy, they state that every person is born free and that freedom is an inherent right. And I wanted to follow that up with a criticism just for balance, but I like that statement too much. In fact, their action plan within this FLP policy is fantastic. They want a bill of rights, those rights to be inalienable, freedom of speech and freedom of the press to be first and foremost, and for your personal data to be ultimately owned by you. But in the interest of balance, they have no climate change policy whatsoever, and their national defence plan consists of increasing the defence budget to 5% of GDP, which is massive. Socialist Alliance Socialism is a political and economic philosophy where the government controls the means of production and distribution. The people that want socialism often imagine their socialist leader as a benevolent gift giver. They should remember that in a democracy, at least 50% of the time, it's your least favourite politician in power. If you don't like Scott Morrison or Anthony Albanese, Donald Trump or Joe Biden, whoever it is, imagine them deciding what will be made by the country and who will get it. But if you've got purple hair and an arts degree, perhaps you just can't resist a wealth tax, nationalizing the mines and banks, 100% renewable energy, a 30 hour work week, retirement at 55 and lots and lots of free stuff. It's been said that if socialists understood economics, they wouldn't be socialists. Their plan to pay for what is clearly the most expensive wish list yet is to tax the rich. They don't understand that if you raise taxes on a business, the businesses will have to raise their prices to pay for the extra tax and the consumer will end up paying the tax through the form of higher prices. That's why it's important to have an understanding of economics. But they do have some ideas that we can all be on board for. For instance, Ending public subsidies for mines and banks. Both are extremely profitable and don't need your money. If they weren't profitable, then they still shouldn't get your money because they would be wasting it. Indexing the tax brackets. Politicians want to index their wages to inflation. If anything, it should be the other way around. Tax brackets should be indexed to inflation and politicians' wages shouldn't be. That would provide politicians an incentive to keep inflation under control. 
they also want to create an ICAC, a Bill of Rights, and repeal data retention laws. All in all, these guys want a big, powerful government that is involved in everything. And if you dread the lines at the Department of Transport, imagine that same level of efficiency at Subway. Well, that's four more relatively unknown parties. The Reason Party and the Socialist Alliance have a lot in common. And surprisingly, everybody supports the legalization of marijuana, even the shooters and fishers. But if each of those were too extreme for you, then check out this next video where I break down the last five parties on the ballot sheet. Remember, you were born free.